Well, hello there, guys. It's Wind Client here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install the Windows Vista Extended Kernel as well as take advantage of the new functionality it offers. Now, if you're new to this channel, you might be wondering, well, what is the Windows Vista Extended Kernel exactly? So basically, all the Extended Kernel is, it's, um, it's a modification to the Windows Vista Kernel made by a user um, named Win32. And what this kernel does is it adds new functionality to Windows Vista to allow it to run modern applications such as the latest versions of Chrome and Mozilla Firefox. As you can see here, I can now run the latest version of Google Chrome at the time of this recording, version 105, on Windows Vista with no problems. Without the extended kernel, Windows Vista would only be able to run version 49 of Chrome with version 50 working unofficially, which is now nearly seven years out of date now. So big thanks and shout outs to Win32 for all of his hard and amazing work on the extended kernel for Vista. So the first thing you want to do before you install it is you want to go to this link that I will post in the description. and. You want to make sure, before you do anything, you want to make sure that your system is 64-bit. So you want to go to Computer, right-click on it, click Properties, make sure that this says 64-bit operating system, because if this says 32-bit right here, unfortunately you cannot install the Extended Kernel, and I don't recommend it. So do not install the Extended Kernel if you have a 32-bit operating system. After determining that you do in fact have a 64-bit version of Windows Vista, you also want to make sure, shouldn't have closed that, you also want to make sure that you have Service Pack 2 installed. If you don't have Service Pack 2, I will post a link in the description where you can download it. If no Service Pack is listed here, you will actually need to install Service Pack 1 first and then install Service Pack 2. So I will in fact post links to both of them in the description so you can install them. After installing whatever service packs were necessary, you want to install this cumulative update, which is listed here on the website. And in order to download it, you want to click on where it says Security Update for Windows Server 2008 for 64-bit systems. You want to click the download button here next to that because although it doesn't say Windows Vista, Server 2008 is merely an edition of Windows Vista. It is the server edition of Windows Vista. So therefore you can use the Server 2008 updates on Vista. So all you have to do is download and install this. I've already done so, so that's not necessary for this system. Then you want to download the platform update for Windows Vista. Uh, right here for Windows Vista X64 systems, you want to make sure that's installed. And then after doing that, you can download the extended kernel. So you just would click on main download here. Then you would click on download. I've already done that, so I don't need to do that. And another thing you'll want to download is the Media Foundation update installer. So you wanna click on the main download for it. Now this one's going to be a little different. Uh, what it will do is it will automatically highlight the file that you need to download instead of showing it like, like a big preview like it did for the other one. So all you have to do, see it's selected it already for you, so all you need to do, you don't need to click anything else in here, you just click on the download button and then it will download it for you. But I've already done that so I don't need to do that again. And so after you download the uh, extended kernel and the mfplat setup, uh, you want to go in here, you'll extract the mfplat with 7-zip, I'll also put a link to that in the description because you do need 7-zip to extract it. And after you extract it, you want to copy these files into a folder on your desktop and just name it one or just a single, any single character will work. Just make sure that it does not have spaces in it. So after doing that, you want to run it as an administrator and then you can press any key to continue. 
you want to make sure that you run it as an administrator. So, so you can see there's no need for me to do it because I've already done it. So, but you would do that. And then, after doing that, you can install the extended kernel. I think you have to restart after doing that, but I don't need to it's already installed. So then you want to go, after you extract it, you'll go into the Vista xkern setup and you'll find setup.exe. You want to right click on it and click run as administrator. And then you want to press any key to continue the setup. And there, as you can see, it finished very quickly. So you can just exit that. Close out of it. Then we're going to restart and I will come back after the system has restarted. Okay, so now the latest version of the extended kernel is installed. So the next thing you'll want to do is go to the computer folder, go to your local disk where Vista is installed, go to Windows, and I'm pretty sure this file gets created automatically but if not, it's very easy to create one yourself. Uh, but it's called osver.ini. If you do need to create one yourself, all you have to do is go into Notepad. You want to just uh, you want to type in the following text. I will post in the description. So global, you like all this right here. You want to put that in there like that so I'll post this in the description so that way you have it and so that way you can just copy and paste it in and you just want to click file and save as and save it to your desktop as osver.ini and then you can copy and paste it into your system directory and now you should be able to add things to it and um, this is what you will need in order to uh, install modern applications on Vista. So I'm going to demonstrate that now. So I'm going to download the latest version of Firefox for uh, Vista. Well, the latest version of uh, Firefox that will run on the extended kernel. I think the absolute latest version doesn't work at this very moment, but um, anyway, I'm going to go to about Firefox. I think this is 102 ESR, so we'll go to the FTP server, and right here, Mozilla so Firefox 102.40 ESR, that's the latest version of it. And then one, we'll go to 64, Win64, that's what we need. And I'm in English US. Then we'll download this exe file. Okay, so Firefox has downloaded. Now, I'm gonna open up this here because what I, what I do is I place a shortcut to the file. Uh, on my desktop so that way if I ever need to modify it it's right there I don't have to keep going in here to do it so right now as you can see this global entry that what that does is it, it uh, will spoof your OS version uh, system wide so as you can see right now it's disabled so it says version 6.0 build 6003 so when we remove this little asterisk here and save the file as you can see now it says that we're on version 6.1 build 7601 now if you're not familiar that is actually the build and version number for Windows 7 so right now any application that you run will think that you are running Windows 7 so we're gonna put the asterisk back for just a moment and I'll demonstrate how this works so we downloaded Firefox 102 ESR we try to run it and of course we're gonna get an error it says your system's not compatible because this is Vista and you need Windows 7 or later so what are you doing you dumbass <laughs> so let's see let's wait for this to come up so there we go we got that error so now all you have to do to get around that 
is go to your OSVR file and where this little asterisk is next to global, you just remove it and click save, control S or save from there. Run it again. And if everything was done correctly, we should no longer get that error message. So as you can see here, here we go. And we can just install Firefox normally. We're going to upgrade our current install because this one's a little newer. Okay, so you don't want to launch Firefox yet because what yours is going to look like. So I'm going to put an asterisk here to disable this real quick. What your Firefox will look like if you try to open it is it's going to look very broken. Well, it's still enabled. Hang on just a moment. Oh, because I have global. Let me turn that off. As you can see here, it, the text is all messed up. You can't read anything. So all you have to do to fix that is you want to, as you can see here, I've already added it, but you just want to add in the uh, Firefox path so you'd go to the shortcut on your desktop and open file location or if there is no shortcut there for whatever reason if it doesn't add the shortcuts like it's supposed to all you have to do is just go to C program files and then uh, Mozilla Firefox and you just want to copy the path where Firefox is installed so as you can see there's Firefox you want to copy and paste it into here and make sure you have the brackets on each side that this you have to format it exactly like it's done here, so pay attention. Make sure you do it exactly like I've done it here. Don't leave the brackets out or anything like that because if you don't do it the way I've done it, it will not work. So after you add Firefox, you just hit, you type in enabled equals one, major version equals six, minor version equals one, build number 7601. So basically the same as you have as global here but what this does is it just spoofs your operating system for Firefox so after you you know have done that you save it and now Firefox will think you're running on 7 now the rest of your system is still gonna think that it's Vista so and you want to what I do is I leave that disabled unless I absolutely need it the global thing because it will cause some application conflicts if you leave it on all the time so only enable it if you absolutely have to have it so for now we're just gonna leave it disabled and I'll open Firefox and demonstrate As you can see now the text looks like it's supposed to and if we look at our about we should now see we're on 102.4.0 so it did successfully install Firefox and for Vista I do recommend the 102 ESR branch at this time that is the latest version of ESR for Vista or for for Windows uh, 7 and 8 and 10 and so on it's the latest version period is what I meant to say but uh, I recommend that for Vista because um, ESR is just less problematic since it's not being updated as often it's mainly just security updates so I definitely would just shoot for ESR don't don't use the mainline Firefox because that one changes a lot uh, more rapidly and it's a lot more likely to cause uh, issues so basically uh, with the knowledge that you've learned here from what I've done with Firefox you can now take this and apply it to basically any application that will run on Windows 7 that is 64-bit. Now 32-bit applications are hit or miss so for example you, the Discord app because I already know there's gonna be comments about that uh, that does not work on Vista at this time because it's a 32-bit application and the 32-bit uh, side of the extended kernel is still very preliminary and very buggy so that does not work yet so don't you know now some 32-bit applications might work but don't count on it working if it's 32-bit but 64-bit is much more stable a lot more things do work uh, the latest version of Chrome also works you can download and install that the same way I did with Firefox you just want to make sure that you remove this uh, asterisk for global the global setting and then you can run the installer then after it's installed you can run it <clears throat> and you don't have to put 
uh, you don't have to spoof a different operating system after you install it if you don't want to. But the thing is, you keep you'll keep getting this stupid pop up every time it says it won't receive Google Chrome updates because XP and Vista are no longer supported. I don't even know why they still have that in there. That's a very dumb thing that they put in there, in my opinion. Because XP and Vista haven't been supported by Chrome in like seven years. So all you have to do is again, you just copy the path, and then to add a new entry, you just do a double space underneath that the first one then put your bracket there paste your path in and then add in the .exe chrome and then enabled equals one major version equals six minor version equals one we don't have to do the build number all this is going to do is make it think you're on seven so now we won't get that pop-up anymore you can see the pop-up does not appear so an auto update doesn't work currently so if you want to update it you'll have to use um, you have to just you know download the installer but uh, as of this video Chrome is actually about to drop support for Windows 7 which means it probably the latest version is not going to work on Vista for a little while I think uh, Win32 is actually going to try and add Windows 10 functionality to Vista to allow the latest version of Chrome to continue to work um, but I'm not sure how long that's going to take it could take a while so I don't really recommend Chrome um, but if you really want to use Chrome you can so as you can see it's working just fine but Firefox is what I recommend uh, more so for Vista and just to demonstrate I also have the latest version of Audacity running here on Vista this normally would never work but it works now this doesn't even officially support 7 anymore. As you can see, this is from October 5th of this year, so it's the latest version. So yeah, that's just been a brief uh, overview tutorial, if you will, on how to install the extended kernel and use it on Windows Vista. I uh, hope you found this video useful, and to those of you all out there, that are wondering where is service pack 3 at for Vista where is it at trust me I've been reading your comments I know you guys are waiting for it I know you all are super excited about it it is still in the works I do know the developer personally uh, he is working on it uh, his name is Zemanot as I mentioned in the other video uh, he is still working on the the service pack 3 for Vista so don't worry it will be coming it's just taking some time he hopes to have it done uh, sometime in 2023, maybe about mid to late 2023 at the latest. Uh, he has been very busy with school. Um, he goes to college and everything. So, you know, he kind of has a life, guys. You kind of have to understand that he does, you know, he has a life outside of Vista that, you know, he doesn't have time to dedicate all of his time to it. Uh, kind of like me, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel horrible for not uploading as much as I should, but you know, I have a full-time job outside of YouTube, and I have to tend to that. I can't, you know, I can't always be around to do YouTube all the time. So that's why I don't upload as frequently as I once did, and I do apologize for that. But I'm going to try to get a little better about that. Um, but unfortunately, life happens, and, you know, I, I, the time gets away from me. And before I know it, it's been a year or seven months or so since I uploaded that last video and I'm like wow it's already been that long so anyway thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed it uh, subscribe if you did like if you did if you didn't that's fine too but anyway thanks again